Do you think the gorillas are the biggest and most dangerous primates? No. Other monkeys, which were four meters tall and weighed half a ton, could compete with them. If they hadn't died out, of course. I'm talking about Gigantopithecus. In this episode, you'll see these prehistoric monsters and find out why they were a hundred times more dangerous than gorillas. And more! Let's go! Who are Gigantopithecuses? The very name Gigantopithecus already hints that we're dealing with a creature of gigantic size. And it really is. Let's find out who they were. Gigantopithecus is an extinct genus of great apes that existed in ancient times on the territory of modern China, India, Thailand, and Vietnam, and became extinct only 100,000 years ago. Little remains of Gigantopithecus today, only a few fossils remain of large teeth and lower jawbones. Nevertheless, scientists still managed to recreate the appearance of this animal from the past. It was a distant ancestor of modern orangutans, only much larger. Gigantopithecus was 1.823 or even 4 meters tall. As for the weight of Gigantopithecus, according to the most modest estimates, it might have been about 200 to 300 kilograms. Bolder estimates of researchers say that the animal weighed up to 550 kilograms. These parameters make Gigantopithecus the largest ape known to science. In general, we can assume that this potentially dangerous animal is even more agile and stronger than modern bears or gorillas. By the way, it's interesting that Gigantopithecuses could frighten anyone with their appearance, but according to many scientists, they were vegetarians. When did Gigantopithecuses become known? The scientific world first learned about Gigantopithecuses in the first half of the last century. And then they discovered not even a skeleton, but a relatively small piece. They found it not somewhere in pristine Asian forests, but on a store shelf in Hong Kong. It happened in 1935 when the German paleontologist Gustav von Koenigswald strolled through the market and paid particular attention to the stores with the means of Chinese traditional medicine. He had a purpose. He was looking for dragon bones. Dragon bones were not, as you might immediately think, the remains of dragons, as traders often referred to fossils of all kinds from all over the world. On one of the counters, von Koenigswald found a pair of molar teeth that had some similarities to human teeth, but were much larger than that of humans, and larger than that of any ape known to science. That same year, Gustav von Koenigswald described a new genus of primates, calling it Gigantopithecus, that is, giant ape. Although the scientist had only teeth at his disposal, he was confident that he was dealing with a creature of enormous size. It was decided to continue the search in the Chinese markets. In 1939, the paleontologist managed to get his hands on some more teeth. He discovered that they'd come from somewhere in the southern provinces of China. It also turned out that there were as many as three species of this giant ape. The earliest of them dates back to about nine million years ago. That is the Miocene period. But the largest of the Gigantopithecus was Gigantopithecus blackii, which lived about 2 million to 100,000 years ago during the Pleistocene in what is now southern China and Vietnam. Gustav von Koenigswald presented a complete description of Gigantopithecus to the world in 1952. Comparison of Gigantopithecus with Gorilla Today, gorillas are the largest great apes and primates in general. They can be up to 180 centimeters tall. They also weigh a lot, from 140 to 200 kilograms. But as it turns out, they still need to compete for the title of the largest monkeys because, according to experts, Gigantopithecuses were up to three or even four meters tall, as I've already mentioned. Again, they weighed up to 550 kilograms, which makes Gigantopithecus twice as big as the mountain gorilla. And the mountain gorilla is considered the largest monkey of our time. If it rises, it would be over two meters tall. Its weight exceeds 250 kilograms and sometimes reaches 365 kilograms. But in any case, the leader in this pair is Gigantopithecus. Gorillas are massive and very strong monkeys with well-developed muscles. The gorilla surpasses any of the humans in strength. In weightlifting competitions, the gorilla will easily break all records because the gorilla can move 10 times its own weight. Nevertheless, gorillas eat mostly grass, wild celery, or fruit, so they're obvious herbivores. The jaws and teeth of Gigantopithecus were one and a half to two times larger than those of modern gorillas, 
so the size of their skull and body must have been enormous. Despite the fact that the skull of these giants has not yet been found, we can still assume that the brain volume of Gigantopithecus was noticeably larger than that of the gorilla. In Gigantopithecuses, the average brain size should be approximately in the range of Pithecanthropus values. Of course, it's not necessary to speak about the developed intelligence of Gigantopithecuses, but nevertheless, such volume also mattered. But since Gigantopithecuses were larger than gorillas, they were also many times more powerful. The gigantic size of Gigantopithecus suggests to some researchers that these huge apes could not feed only on plant food. For example, in 1956 to 1958, in the Lucheng area of Guangxi Province, in the cave of Mount Langjaishan, there were discovered several teeth and the lower jaw of Gigantopithecus. First, attention is attracted by the fact that the caves were usually located on very inaccessible slopes. Moreover, no traces of fire or any implements were found there. But numerous bones of hoofed animals were found in cave deposits. Bones of large mammals found together with Gigantopithecuses, and visibly similar of the latter with human ancestors, suggest that Gigantopithecus hunted even such large animals as rhinos as well as mastodons and stegodons. But in order to overpower such large animals, they could at least use some tools, right? Some are sure that Gigantopithecuses were able to defeat large animals without the use of tools because they were endowed with enormous physical strength. We can imagine that they set up ambushes on the high, steep riverbanks where animals came to drink water and where their migration routes passed. The hairy giants could easily kill their prey by throwing a large stone from a height. Therefore, if we take into account the known information and assumptions of many researchers, we can say that Gigantopithecuses are a hundred times more dangerous than even gorillas, which are the strongest and most formidable primates of today. How did Gigantopithecuses move? The method of movement of Gigantopithecus still raises many questions, since the pelvic and leg bones have not yet been found. Here, scientists are divided into two camps. Of course, the opinion that they walked on four limbs like modern gorillas and chimpanzees is predominant. From the point of view of adherence of this theory, if Gigantopithecus walked on two legs, the weight of such a large and heavy animal would have created an enormous load on the legs and feet. And when moving on four limbs like a modern gorilla, the weight would have been distributed on each limb better. However, there's also an opinion in favor of the bipedalism of Gigantopithecus. Such an idea, for example, has been advanced by the anthropologist Grover Krantz based on the very few jaws that have been found which are U-shaped and widened toward the rear. Accordingly, this leaves room for a windpipe. It makes it possible for the skull to sit directly on the straightened spine, as in modern humans, rather than in front of it, as in other great apes. What happened to Gigantopithecus? Despite all the information available to researchers, we can say that very little is still known about Gigantopithecuses. However, even with this amount of information, scientists continue to find out what happened to these giants. For example, researchers at the Senckenberg Center for Human Evolution and Paleoenvironment in Germany believe they have uncovered at least one mystery that surrounds the giant primates. They believe that the ape went extinct because of an inability to adapt. Anthropologist Sherry Nelson of the University of New Mexico has also set out to determine the cause of the extinction of the largest man-ape genus. Nelson believes that climate change was the cause of the extinction of Gigantopithecuses. The giant simply failed to adapt to it on a dietary level. To confirm her words, she turned to the isotopic composition of monkey's dental enamel. The fact is that many physical and chemical processes contribute to changes in the isotope ratios in certain elements. In the 1970s, it was shown that different diets of animals are characterized by their isotopic portraits. A little later, it was found out that isotopic differences are reflected in the enamel during the formation of teeth. Thus, Nelson selected several species of animals that inhabited the same territory at the same time as Gigantopithecuses. Next, she analyzed the ratios of different oxygen and carbon isotopes in the enamel of these animals. It was well known what these selected species ate so she obtained an isotopic portrait of their diets. The anthropologist then compared these portraits with the enamel data of Gigantopithecuses. In the course of the study, Nelson was able to establish the following. It turned out that the giant apes were vegetarians after all, but they didn't like bamboo. 
Then it turns out that this generally diverges from the popular opinion among scientists that Gigantopithecuses ate mostly bamboo. Nelson concludes that climate change, namely cooling, had drastically reduced the availability of plant food or made many species and varieties disappear altogether. Thus, the area of forests has shrunk and the number of open savannas has increased. Unlike smaller apes, it wasn't possible for Gigantopithecuses to survive in the new conditions. Other primates were smaller in size, so they required much less food and could also live in the canopy of trees. But Gigantopithecuses couldn't do that. That's why the genus became extinct. That's all, guys. Could King Kong defeat Gigantopithecus? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.